Want to instantly make your Revit view smarter, cleaner, and way easier to read? View filters are one of the most powerful tools in Revit, but most people never touch them. Let me show you why they're a game changer. Before we get started, like and subscribe for more Revit power tips. View filters in Revit control graphics and visibility of an element based on parameter rules. There's a lot of different ways to use this, but some examples are to show fire rated walls in red or to hide working view tags in the plans that you mean to print. They are similar to the controls and visibility graphics, but they let you select elements based on parameter settings. In this example, I'm gonna apply view filters, all the fire rated walls within this view. I'll select a solid fill with a red color, click OK. And now you'll see all of the fire rated walls within this view are now red and all of the non fire rated walls are still the same color that they were before. Main way that you access the view filters is in the view tab, filters, and you'll see I have quite a few set up here from the BIM Depot Revit template. The way that these work is if you go within here and create new, you'll name it. Under categories, you'll select all the elements that you want to control. So in this case, we want to show all of the fire rated walls. So essentially what this is allowing you to do is to select walls, but not all walls. It's going to be only the walls that you select using certain parameter rules. So how we set that within the filter rules, you'll notice that walls is highlighted. You'll do this drop down for the parameter. Select fire rating. You'll click on the operator drop down. And within here, you're given a lot of different options for how to select what the parameter is saying. So for example, if we wanted to see all of the one hour fire rating, we would say equals one hour. But in this case, we already have a one hour fire rating filter. And notice this, this says one HR, that's gonna be very specific. So it needs to match exactly as it is in the parameter settings. So this, for example, wouldn't work because we typed out our, we would actually need to type it out exactly as it is in the wall. So for this filter, let's go ahead and say we wanna see all of the fire rating walls. In this case, we can say is greater than, and essentially what this is saying is if there's a value within here, so if it's been given a fire rating, it's going to show up. Let's click okay. go to our filters. Let's go ahead and remove these. Once we're in the filters tab, we can click add, scroll down to our fire rated all, so the filter that we just created. And then you'll notice, just like the visibility graphics override, you're given almost all the same options. So if we click override in the cut category, so let's go ahead and give it a orange fill, different from last time. Now, if we click OK, you'll notice that not all of the walls were adjusted. It was only the walls that had an element within it for fire rating. So if we click on this wall, click Edit Type, Fire Rating, you'll notice that two hours is located here. So essentially, since it has a value here, it's giving it this orange highlight. If we go back to our filter tab, you'll notice that a lot of the same options that you have within your visibility graphics are also given within the filter. A few of the additional ones, so you'll see visibility. If we uncheck that and click apply, it'll actually just hide all the elements that are selected. If we undo that, click apply. And then there's also a check mark for enable filter. So if we uncheck this, click apply, you'll notice that those settings, that orange fill, is no longer within that view. Essentially what this is, is an on-off switch for that filter. So let's say you want to temporarily hide something, or if you want a bunch of filters loaded within a template, and you want to be able to select quickly for a temporary hide, but then switch it off. So let's just get rid of that part. So basically what the enable filter checkbox is, is an on-off switch for that filter. So there are multiple ways that you can apply a view filter to a view. So what we've been doing so far is clicking on our visibility graphics override, 
you can also click VG on your keyboard, going to the filter tab and adding it here. Best practice for things like this is to use view templates. So view templates are essentially visibility graphic settings, but in a template such that if you modify it in one location, it's gonna modify it in all of the different views that have that template applied. So if we go down, and these are view templates that are already set up in the BIM Depot Revit template. Go to Plan, Life Safety, click OK. So now if we click on our view template to modify it, find Filters, click Edit. I have several view filters loaded here. So let's say we wanted to modify each one individually. So now all of these different fire rated walls are going to diff get different colors. So if we click OK, OK. So now you'll notice that the different fire ratings associated with those colors are now showing up differently. So if we go back into our filters and look at what's happening, the four hour rated is receiving red, one hour blue, two hour green, three hour cyan. And if we look, click edit, click on the four hour and see how this is working. Essentially what's happening here is that we are selecting all of the walls, all of the doors, and then filter rules. You'll notice that instead of all selected categories, we're just saying walls or doors. You could switch this to say all selected categories and it's gonna select from both walls and doors. And then another distinction that's very important here You'll notice that this says or, so any rule may be true. If you click on and, this is going to automatically change everything to say all selected categories, and then all of the rules must be true. So the fire rating must equal four hours and equal 180 minutes. So obviously that's not possible. We'll switch that back. So again, using view filters is best practice for all of the view types that are of the same category. So all of our life safety plans should look the same. So you can select all, apply that view filter. And now if we go to another view, you'll notice those same settings are changed here. And let's say, let's make a modification. change the color to purple for all of the walls. Click OK. So you see now all of our fire rated walls are purple. And if we go back to our level two life safety plan, now all these walls are also purple because they're the same view template. So in summary, view templates and filters are scalable visibility control. You update it once and it applies everywhere. This is huge for your workflow, especially on larger projects. So let's say there is no parameter that is common amongst all the elements that you want to select. So say it's a random assortment of things or for whatever case your project needs. There's another way that you can go about doing that manually. So this is going to be done using selection filters. So let's go ahead and select a random assortment of things. A few things here. So you'll notice that once we selected multiple things under the modify tab, you'll see the selection filter. So we can click save, let's name it, click okay. Now, when we go to add a filter, it's not really clear what all of those have in common. The one thing that they do have in common is if we click add, minimize rule-based filters, you'll see selection filters. Now this BD underscore random selection, that's the selection group that we just made. We'll click OK. And now we can modify it in the same way that we modified the previous fire rated walls. So now you notice that everything that we just selected now has that rule based filter that we've given to it. This can be really helpful in a lot of different situations. Every project has unique things that you need to show in a very unique way and this is a great way to do it. Best practice though, is to use rule-based filters. So if that selection category changes, it'll automatically update and it's not something that you have to go back and do a manual selection. So let's talk about naming our view filters. So as I've said in other videos, I always like to add an abbreviation in front. So that way everything that is meant to be in my template is sorted together and I know how to find it really easily even if there are other project teams or things that get imported inadvertently, I'm still able to find 
my tools really quickly. So this is for filters, sheets, views, anything. So I like to do the top level categories. So in this case, views. So we're talking about callouts, elevations, sections, and so on. This is really saying that we want all the views within uh, that particular view. So it's all the callouts. And then the next I put a period and then a phrase that helps describe how the filter rules are actually working. So we have our categories covered up top and then we have our filter rules kind of next. So in this case, I want all the views that are not on sheets. So I did my rule, sheet number is less than or equal to. So essentially, if there's no value here for the sheet number, I want it selected. So again, if it doesn't have a sheet number, I want the selection filter to grab it. So let's see how this works. Okay, okay, view's not on sheet. Let's go ahead and enable it. Visibility is unchecked, so it's gonna hide it in this view. You'll notice there are some views that are not on sheets. Let's click okay, apply. Since we turned that off, it is now gone. So you'll notice that the way that I named the filter has nothing to do with what I'm doing within the actual overrides. So I never ever say what I'm gonna do with it in the overrides, because in this view, I might want to hide it, but in other views, I might want to call it out in red. So this is going to help me figure out which views are being used and which views aren't. So now all these views are red that are not on sheets. So if you give it that flexibility and you don't, by leaving override information out of the filter name, you actually make it more flexible to be used in different situations. In other cases, I also like to show inverse. So you'll notice two things here, section building and section building inverse. So essentially what that's saying is that section building, high level category, I'm selecting sections, and then I'm selecting all the sections that are building sections. So view name contains building. And then in the opposite case, inverse, I essentially want every single section that is not a building section. So it could be a detail section, a wall section, and so on. So what I do differently here is that I change it to does not contain instead of contains. So that's essentially going to give me every section that's on a building section. So within our BIM Depot Revit template, we have a bunch of these already preloaded. They're really useful, user-friendly, and they're ready to go on day one when you purchase. If you're not using filters, you're missing an opportunity to clean up your documentation and reduce errors. This is not only a great QA tool, but a huge time saver for your project team. If you want a clean starting point with built-in view filters and templates, check out our BIM Depot Revit template. This will save you literally hours and avoid mistakes before they even happen. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more Revit tutorials.